Jackson, and today I'm going to be sculpting or continuing to sculpt on this Mel Milton design, my good friend Mel, um, and his amazing Princess Leia. I love how, how huge the cinnamon buns are on the sides of her head. So today I just want to continue working on the hair and the, I guess it's a dress <laughs> that she's wearing. So um, between sessions, I kind of mess around with just blocking out some of the hair and I'll continue working on it today. So hello and welcome. All right. Hey, Neil. Let me see here. I just want to share this to Facebook. Share, share, share. All right. That's all I need to do. And we're good. Okay, so I I just blocked this out a little bit, not too much. Um, the the hair right here is just a sphere that I squashed down, and then same with these. These are just appendage, um, insert multi meshes that I just stretched out and, and put here, and then these are just squash spheres. And then I was messing with um, the Orbs Cracks brush on these. I really really love the Orbs Crack brush for. Uh, kind of blocking stuff out and just just playing with stuff. So, hey Mark, how you doing? Okay, I just wanted to get kind of a. A reference on these buns a little better. <laughs> okay. All right. So they kind of just go start from the back and just roll forward. All right. So what I'm going to do with these buns is basically like make them. I want to say make them for real, but kind of make them, make them as if they ex they exist on her head. I'm just going to curl a tube up and around, kind of like the, like it is, <laughs> rather than just hand cut this in like this. Um, yeah, because I, I want I want the where it where one roll meets the next roll to kind of go in more. So we'll see how that goes. Let's try it out. It might be an exercise in frustration, but we'll see. <laughs> hey, Kayo, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. Yeah, Mel, Mel is amazing. If you haven't seen Mel's work before, I highly recommend checking it out now. Come on, select it. Oh, it must be subdivided. Oh, uh, goodness, what's going on here? Okay. Split unmasked. <laughs> Look up Danish pastries. Hey, Max, how you doing? Okay, so um, I'm just going to try and attempt this. Now, I could use the, uh, use the curve editor, the curve modifier inside of the, uh, inside here this bend curve, um, I might give that a go. But again, I might just kind of push it around by hand and just, just Z remesh it. But let's, let's see how we do. Let's see how we, how it works. Let's try it out here. I'm gonna stretch this really far. And then um, I'll Z remesh this and subdivide it. Kind of want it to taper like that. Uh, 
Okay. Maybe not super tight. Maybe like that. Okay. We can Z remesh this as it sits to get a square, more even, evenly subdivided stuff. Let's do a one on here and see what it gives us. Okay, there you go. See how it's it's nice and even quads now. That's good. That's what I like. Um, I think I'm gonna go in half though. Let's do half and get it even even lower. Maybe this. It's getting. It's not as square. The the mesh. The the quads are not quads. They're rectangles. So I'm gonna go back. Okay, at least one. Let's try this uh, bend curve modifier. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna try it out. Okay. I'll turn on transparent just so we can kind of see what's happening here. gonna have to work it around see it might not work because of see it's kind of got this pinching going on but I, I might be able to just z remesh it and get rid of the issues that it might that might arise I think what's happening is it's it's gimbling on itself gimbal is a term from an, from animation Couch otter. That's true. Okay, let's increase the density here. Okay, let's maybe work from the center out. I wanted to go around this twice, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Maybe. Let's see. Kind of un unrolling it <laughs> as it goes around. See, this keeps tying up in knots. No pun intended. Yeah, see, now I'm running out of resolution here. I think we're doing okay, though. I don't know how far I can make it. You know, that's pretty good. And I think I can just stretch this end over to be where I need it to be and be good. Hey, David. <laughs> funny, funny. Okay, I think I'm gonna com commit this and we'll see if we can continue to uh, get it looking better. Okay. Hit accept on this. And then, um, I can use this move elastic with the topological turned on. Let's see if I can get this to stretch. I kind of like that it's sort of square-ish, so it's not perfectly round. And then this last bit just kind of gets tucked back up underneath here. Oh, come on. I'm doing well, thanks. 
Can't you just Z remesh your dynamic? I did Z remesh it. Um, I don't want to dynamesh it because that will close my gaps. Okay, something like that. And see, I want to move this independently from the interior so I can give it a nice, so I can tuck it around like this. Yeah, there we go. So then it looks like a sweet roll. <laughs> and I'm just making this up as I go. I d I've never done this before. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> a huge hair hand solo. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be funny. What were the points that I used to make the spiral? It's actually in the gizmo, underneath the gear of the gizmo, and it's called bend curve, right there. So that's what I used to, to... and I could have used the, um, like Z-spheres, but sometimes Z-spheres, it doesn't interpolate between spheres well enough. You need to have a lot of spheres or else it'll look very uh, polygonal. So this gives me a nice, a nicer, uh, Nicer curves. Okay. So I'm actually liking that. Okay, it's kind of looking weird on the inside here. Need some inflation. I agree with you, David. Just inflate this side so it doesn't look like it's Just even out this topology. Okay. So you kind of want to make it look like it's it, it can function realistically. Sorry, I'm spinning all over the place today. All right, so now let's uh, let's fit it to our block out shape a little better. Thanks, Zorin. I'll take that. Kind of looks like a tire. <laughs> I want to make it look a little more, a little rounder, I guess. Not so tire shaped. Hey, Neil, I have not yet. I need to. <laughs> Are you talking about like the Olsen twins? <laughs> Except for their last name is spelled O-L-S-E-N, which is Dutch. And my last name is spelled O-L-S-O-N, which is Swedish. That's a bit, a bit of a tidbit of information that you didn't need to know today. <laughs> so next time you're at a party, dropping knowledge. Hey, Ika, how you doing? Oh yeah, you guys. So thanks, Nightbot. <laughs> um, tune in next for Zebra Central Breakdown featuring uh, Guillaume. I can't. I can never pronounce his name, but he is amazing. He's amazing. A uh, friend of mine. He he made this image. Well, he makes a lot of just phenomenal models. And um, yeah, I I uh, I highly recommend you watch him do his breakdown of his latest model. It's it's so good. So good. Super nice fellow as well. Okay, so I'm gonna make, I wanna curl this even more. 
I don't know what Z remesher will do if I Z remesh it at this time, but I, I kind of don't want to, but I, at the same time I do because I want more resolution up here. Any ZBrush? I, Aaron, I don't, I don't work for Pixel Logic. I'm just a volunteer here. I just, I just stream voluntarily. I, I'm not a, I'm not an employee or, or Maxon. I don't work for Maxon or Pixel Logic. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this and then Z remesh it just to see what it does. It might break it. So um, these brushes right here, these are my, my brushes that I give away for free. So if you want these brushes, you can go get them over at uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's right above my head right here. You can go get them. There's a link. This pixel, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the details of it or how they're, they're working it out, honestly. Let me see what I want to do with this. I, I don't want to mess up the geometry on the interior of this. So I think what I'm going to do. Is just use the old Z modeler brush and insert some edges here and give me some more. Geometry. Rather than trying to because I just know that Z remesher. It will mess this up this curl on the inside. It will. It will have a problem with that. I just know from experience. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Farron. to showing what's going on there we go so i gotta say that that pinch brush comes from uh from the ma cut brush so it started out as ma cut and then it ended up I did some adjustments to it and I know, cinnamon rolls, right? Cinnamon buns. Some people call them cinnamon buns, cinnamon rolls. So I also give away this user interface with my brushes. And I give away my ruler file, which is a great way to measure your, your objects. For 3d printing and for like game development and stuff like that it's all available over on my website 3dcharacterworkshop.com and i also teach an online course about how to do characters like this and it's called the 3d character workshop go figure <laughs> i'm always craving bacon david when are you ever not? Okay. I'm actually really liking how this is turning out. Sometimes, you know, you try something and it was a mistake. Other times, you're not so bad. I wish bacon was good for you. Why can't it be good for you? Okay, let's see. Alt to scale. So 
I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but there's this hidden um, scaling. It's not really hidden, but not a, not a lot of people use it. So I want to scale this on the Z and Y axes and not the X axes. So if you hover over this rectangle, you'll see that it says hold down control to clip and hold down alt to scale on the X and the Z. Now, the trick to it is you have to start to scale and then add alt to the, the selection. So if I start to scale this like this and then I push alt, you'll see it flips to the other direction. Okay, I just wanted to make them, make them ridiculously large. Okay, and now we will, I wanna make some poly groups so I can just kind of section this off uh, with masking and add the, um, the details to the hair. I'll look at my, my references again. Still, I kinda of wanna pull this out even more, these buns. Um, yeah, it just focuses on stylized characters. That's that's my thing. That's what I do. That's what I teach. If you want to see some results, like some results from the course from character work, you can always go to the 3D Character Workshop Instagram page, and that's almost all character work. There's a few that are that are my own, but most of it is care, uh, student work. Sorry. Okay, let's make some poly groups. <clears throat> I want to push this geometry back. It's not so stretched out right there. Maybe add one more, maybe two more right here. Just adding more geometry to even this out and make it smoother without having to retopologize it. Now, you notice that um, there is, I have to this topological button, and what that does is it, it's like a masking fall off. So, topological masking is a masking. So, you don't want to combine masking with this button. But the reason I have this button on my user interface up, up top is because you can add topological masking to any of these brushes. For example, if I'm using this move elastic brush and I turn off topological and I try to move this, it's going to do this. See, it moves really weird, it moves everything, right? And it's kind of squashy, stretchy. If I turn on topological, uh, this range button is tied to the topological button and it's kind of like adjusting the fall off on a spotlight um, so you have a focus and then you have a fall off that's what this range is so if i turn that range down really low to like a three it's only going to affect right around the brush and then it will fall off so that way i can um i can adjust this for the the top tube without affecting the secondary tube down here See that? So, and I'm using the um, elastic brush. It works really well for long, thin objects, you know, like hair, horns, things like that. Okay. And then you can turn on topological to smooth as well. So if you hold down shift, you can hit that button while you're holding shift down and then if I, then I can just smooth the tube on the inside without affecting the tube on the outside. 
It's really nice. Okay, so let's get these, uh, I'm gonna do this select lasso here. And then we're gonna just start to make some poly groups. It's totally TIE Fighter. <laughs> Chris, I didn't think about that. That's hilarious. So I'm just kind of sectioning some of this off. And if you hit an edge, it will hide the, the ring rather than just the, the edge or the face. And it only works with uh, select lasso. It doesn't work with select this uh, select rectangle. Now that I have all these parts individual, I can click on auto groups and that's going to put each piece in its own group. And then I can invert the selection and do it again. Auto groups. And now we have a whole bunch of different groups, different sections but you'll notice that it's not symmetrical. So I just go mirror and weld, and now it's symmetrical. Easy peasy. And so the reason I did that is just so I can work on different sections of this hair, because I wanna add some surface detail to it. Where do you find topological masking? It is under uh, brush auto masking topological. So if you go up to brush auto masking, it's right there. Yeah. Or you can go get my user interface and it's right there. Okay. So now what the reason I split this up into polygroups is because it makes it really easy rather than trying to deal with the topological thing. Um, now I can just use these polygroups to, I hold down control and tap on one of the polygroups and it just masks everything except for the one I just tapped on. And then I can just work in this section and then move on. I like to do that with fingers and different appendages and things like that too. It just keeps it, keeps it nice and clean. Okay, now I'm gonna add some uh, subdivision levels, not, not dynamic ones, but real ones. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna save it. And again, this uh, concept is done by my really good friend, Mill Melton. If you haven't checked out his work, uh, yeah, it's he's over on Instagram at Mill Made Dukes. So good. Okay. Thanks, comics. Okay, I'm subdividing this up to about 2 million. Now it's all super smooth. Uh, do you duplicate the subtool before adding detail just so you have an extra? Yeah, sometimes I will. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, or I'll save the file so then I can go back to a previously saved file if I want to. Okay, so now if I want to work on a section like this, um, or I can even hide different different pieces like if this is in the in the way So then I can get get to that section of the tube Essentially, and then I can go clear through it I'm trying to think about I might use um, I might use these uh, polygroups to even make hair, like hair chunks wrapping around. For example, 
say this was a big giant hair chunk, I could, if you hover over this yellow box, see how it says hold control to inflate? I can hold control and then maybe, come on, I can do it. There, it's inflating. Clear my mask, you can see it looks like, it doesn't look like hair though, it looks like a worm collar. <laughs> you know those things that worms have, like, <laughs> okay. I won't do that. I'm just going to use the Orb Cracks brush. Come on. Is that not the one? Here we go. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, this this is a really nice pack of brushes. Here, I'm just gonna, I don't need to mask these off since I have the in, in middle hidden. Let's see, I gotta turn off topological now. What? Oh, it looks like there's the little slivers here. Let me put turn on double and see what's going on here. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> it's like I, I made these little teeny tiny slivers. Weird. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to rewind this. Something's... Something's going on. Okay, I'm going to mirror this. Mirror weld. Try this again. See if there's islands here. No. I don't know where those came from. That's really strange. Okay. Hey, Leonard, how are you doing? Okay. Adding real subdivision levels. Again. Up to 2 million. And then I'm going to save this out again. Why don't I have music going? I don't know. There we go. All right. So these go like, I'm just kind of putting these as guides here. They kind of tuck in like that. Hmm. I can use masking as well. Um, since since it's going all the way around, I might do that. You guys working on anything fun? Only 
Apparently the render video remained how to get them. So you bought what pack for $4? What are you talking about? What pack? You're talking about orbs brushes? I have, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I don't own the orbs brushes. I didn't make them, so I would reach out to them. You should be able to, to uh, get a hold of them through Gumroad. Sometimes you just have to be slow and methodical about things. So I, it's not it's not as fun to watch, but uh, you know sometimes you just have to take your time and do it. Printing out the last pieces of your ATAT, -AT, awesome days to prep i bet i would love to see that leonard i don't want to get this too even and looking like a peppermint candy or something so i'm going to vary the size and the angle Will I comic render or NPR? Um, I, I will probably take it outside of ZBrush to render it out. Um, just a PBR render. Oh, right on. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to see it. Now this reminds me of that... Uh, what is that zebra gum? You know, that gum that has those. <laughs> yeah. MS Paint's always a good choice. Yeah, like a peppermint swirl. I was thinking about that, but that gum, you know, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, I'll just stick with this one, I think. Fruit stripes. Thanks, <laughs> Mark. I knew you'd know it. The, where the flavor lasts two seconds. I think the fl flavor goes away like literally two seconds after you put it in your mouth. First chew. Oh, it's done. <laughs> Can't get the angle of this. Maybe a medium. I might have this one just taper off. Hey, Chris. Yeah. 
You know, I think I might just, I don't know why I'm spending all this time doing this. I think what I'm going to do, because I don't think this is going to give me the look I want. If I blur it, and then invert it, and then either push it in or pull it out. Here, let's see what this looks like. If I hide the mask. Yeah, it kind of looks like a croissant rather than hair, right? <laughs> okay. Sometimes you just you try stuff and you got to go back. There aren't any UVs on this. This is just sculpting. So I'm going to store a morph target. And then hide these again. Okay. And I'm going to go back to that orbs crack brush. That's better. Something like that, maybe. David, you're not the first person to say that, but thank you. <laughs> it's funny that people say, because I kind of have a relaxing Bob Ross style voice, I guess. I'm going to switch to zebra modeling, maybe, so we can see what's happening. Gosh dang it. I kind of like that, just that stripe right there. I don't want to do too many. <laughs> yeah, ASMR, whatever it's called. <laughs> Thanks, Glass. It's really hard for me not to keep things like like perfectly spaced. It's like super natural for me to just like make everything even, you know? It it takes a lot of effort to make things uneven. My brain just is just like even. Did you guys watch Ryan earlier? I think his mic wasn't working very well. So I'm trying to get a look kind of like this in a way, but I don't no, not no Ryan Kingsland. Um Ryan, I can't remember his last name. Kittleson, thank you. Mm. 
go bigger on some of these. It's kind of nice. There we go. Put some overlapping stuff like that. So difficult to get it to look good. Because another thing you can do is just like like I was trying to do before is just paint a mask and pull it out or you can use like this chisel brush and just cut in a bunch of lines like this you know <laughs> super harsh but then you smooth them down hmm let me turn it to not this material for a second. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the effect I was going for. So it's not too bad. Another thing you can do is um, like a clay buildup sort of deal. I try that too. Like this. You know, that might work. Wish it was a little softer. You ordered the Anycubic Photon M3 Max large format. Nice. Seems really good. So it's going to take a month. Nice. What are you going to do with it? Like, what do you want to print on it? Constant? Okay. That might work. All right. Yeah, I might change up my tactics on this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sometimes you just, I'm, I'm just trying to find the look I'm after, you know? And it's not quite this. And it's okay to like rewind and try something else and Okay, try something else. I want to try maybe let me mask off. So one fun thing to do is just like mask through here. Let's see. I kind of want it to go like that. Okay. Then you can grab it just like with a with a move brush and just pull it out to break it up. That might be just the thing.
Is this not? Oh, I, I went too low in when, when I rewound it. <laughs> I went too low in subdivision levels. So I like what's happening there, but... Okay, let's see. What are we at? Okay, there we go. No, inflate will inflate will cause warbles. Okay, let's try that. It's just it, it I uh, it wasn't subdivided to high enough resolution. So basically, what I can do is go like this. Oops, invert that. Move this out. See, when you use move brush, you can keep it nice and clean all the way along the edge of the mask. And then you can do thin to thick to thin again as you move it across. You can do it again on the inside. I don't want to make it look like a horn, so I don't want it to go all the way back, you know? Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, and then what I can do here, let's see, I don't like that one, but I do like the one above it. So what I can do with this one is push it in. Then it'll make it look like a, like a raised slab that I've laid on the surface. Yeah, that's what I want. And trying the Hector Moran way of making hair. So glad you got him for the lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's awesome. I mean, I could also do something like, like this. I'm just doing both at once. And then I can mix it with, you know, like Orbs Crack brush and stuff. So after I get these, then I can come through here and kind of do something across there like that. Because then these will break the silhouette and then the internals will make it seem deta more detailed. Yeah, that works. Okay. Thanks for being patient with me, guys. <laughs> right? Because there's so many ways that honestly that you can do stuff in ZBrush. That's what, that's the beautiful thing about it. Still kind of looks like a tire, but that's okay. Oops. Do some small ones. Ooh, I like those. It's 
probably do one of those kind of crisscrossing. Oh, geez. Modeler extrude? Like the Z model, like this? No. I only use that for poly like polygons, typically. Yeah, I dig that. Hey, Peter's Animation, how you doing? Flip this upside down like this. Gosh dang it, I keep holding the wrong hotkey. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. As Mel Milton would say, now we're cooking with grease. <laughs> Leonard Wright. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it's drizzled with chocolate, doesn't it? <laughs> Gosh dang it. Every single time. Every time. You do portfolio reviews? I do for my acceleration students. So I have I have an acceleration program where it's a mentoring program. Yeah, just just simple I would I would, but I just don't I don't have too much time. I mean you can try and send it to me and I'll see if I can get to it, but I'm not I'm not sure. Again. So someone who does portfolio reviews during their stream is uh, Thomas. And he goes live tonight. He's a, he's a great, great zebra sculptor. He does jewelry and characters. Oh my gosh, that's driving me crazy. Come on. Hey Zach, uh, 
I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I've always wanted to try and make 3D sculpting modeling a career. I recently have left my old career to try and pursue this. Do you have any tips on school versus self-taught? I do hope to go to school, but lots are saying. So my thoughts on that are it depends on how like motivated you are um, and how fast you learn stuff. Um, so if you're learning like by trying to follow videos on YouTube and things, it's, they're kind of random, you know, and they might be outdated information that you're watching and you never know. And, you know, sometimes you'll get really great information from people who uh, are putting it out there. Um, but it's not really a cohesive linear learning experience. So you don't know where to really start and what to focus on. Sometimes YouTube videos are great when you're um, running into like a specific issue. Like say, how do I do blah, right? Um, and then you can find information that way. But if you're like wanting to f seriously learn what it takes to do this as a career, then you either need to, um, I would say find a, find a good school if you like Noman or something like that. Um, or like not to promote myself, but I have an online course called the 3D Character Workshop and I have an acceleration program. And the acceleration program is specifically for people to do as an alternative to school, but it's not, it's not cheap like a, just a, a, you know, a video course. It's like mentorship, so. If you want to find out more information about that, you can email me at uh, shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I can give you the information for it if you're interested. Or if you want, you can check out my course over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Yeah, that's a much better result than I was trying to get with the other stuff. Let's do like just this piece. Did it again. Yeah, glass, that's that's exactly why I created it. Because it's very frustrating when you're stuck, right? You're just like, how do I get past this issue I'm having? And it's nice just to go, oh, I'll just ask my teacher, right? too much. <laughs> David. <clears throat> oh, why did it flip upside down? Come on, get back here. 
Okay, there we go. And this would 3D print really well, too. Because it's not. So when you use a hair brush, like uh, straps that you're laying on top of, of uh, existing geometry, the outcome can look very, very nice, but you can also create pockets in your mesh that won't 3D print very well. Get it again. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? How you doing, man? I just installed ZBrush on my um, my iMac, and it still has the screensaver on ZBrush. And your Lion King sculpt came up, Jimmy, and it's oh, it's so good. It's so good. How are you, my friend? So, if you guys don't know who Jimmy Levinsky is should check out his artwork. It's amazing. Great person to study. I'm doing well, thanks. Making this Mel Milton Princess Leia <laughs> with giant buns. <laughs> Hey, Ash, how you doing? I'm, I'm struggling trying to figure out this hair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Big buns. Yep, that's what they call her in high school. <laughs> It uploaded bad JPEGs for the scope. So when it comes up, oh, I see. It's a little low resolution. So if you guys didn't know, Ashley's another streamer on here. And she does some crazy, awesome, cool monsters. I love them so much. <laughs> She streams on Wednesdays. How you doing, Ashley? I caught you a little bit last week. It, I don't know what it is with your streaming time, but I, I, I feel like I can only stay for like a second before I have to go do something. I know I don't need to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's not, it's, it's actually not late for me. It's just, it's actually right in the middle of the day. So I'm usually doing something at the time that requires my focus. It's a chocolate donut. Where's my drink? Hold on a second. Ugh. Speaking of prints, somebody was talking about a printer earlier. I've, I've printed some more of my stuff. It's not assembled yet, not all the way. You can see back here, my cowboy, he's missing his arm, his arm's laying like right 
there. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's it's like this tall. And then there's uh, I printed out my my Kate. So I I cover her. I I teach you how to model her in in my course. I wanted to print her out as big as those other two, so I can have kind of this you know, one sixteenth scale collection going on. How do you get yourself up on Pixelogic ZBrush Live and do you have a set of projects lined up? No, I just kind of, honestly, sometimes I pick my concept like five minutes before I go live. <laughs> and, and Ashley is, she just kind of makes it up as she goes most of the time. Um, so, uh, how, how you get here is, um, I was invited. I don't know. You could reach out to them, I guess. There's an application form on Twitch in the info panels. Yay. Look at you. You know more about it than I do. Thanks, Ashley. Gosh dang it. Yes, it is volunteer non-paid. I don't get paid to do this. It's all just for my love of ZBrush. They do let me promote my course, which is great. But yeah, it's volunteer. Do you ever print your rate? No, I have. <laughs> Leonard, I have way too many things to print, honestly. Unfortunately, I still have to print my daughter's mushroom out. And my little, uh, I want to print out my leprechaun to set him on my monitor. All right, almost there. So I like the this back section more than I like what I did down here. <laughs> I kind of want to flatten this out and redo it, but maybe later. Friend Victor Martin was the only one who made streams in Spanish, but he dropped out. Aw. Come on. Okay, stick. Oh, I have a perspective. You'd like a copy of the Leprechaun? <laughs> I might give it away as a ZTL file. If you guys don't know what, what I'm talking about with that Leprechaun, it's something that I streamed during St. Patrick's Day. Was it last year? Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, Leprechaun, here we go. So many models in this folder. Here's a Leprechaun I did during the stream. I'm pretty proud of this one because it's not a, it's, it's not from a concept, it's just something I threw together. And I made his butt flat so he can uh, sit on your shelf and be all happy and glee. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. So this was the kind of hair I was starting to do 
around, you know, because I really like the look of this hair. It looks like hair, you know? Um, and that's what I was starting to do around these buns, but I started to get like, oh man, this is going to take me five live streams. So I was like, F, F this, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Always after your lucky charms. Okay. So I got to print that guy out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of my thing. Smooth and clean. Um, have you tried the mask mesh balloon and turned down the lazy steps for the lazy radius? What are you talking about? I got I got to is is for hair Jimmy or what are you talking about? Crisp curved masks. Oh, I got you. Okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'll try it one second. Let me pull these out. It's kind of overlapping. What are you talking about, Jimmy? <laughs> All right. You don't know where to start? You start at the beginning. <laughs> um, I always recommend uh, for people to start blocking out characters. Like just start, you can watch some of my past live streams and see how I block out characters. Just use primitive objects and try and um, get a character with just primitive objects. And then when you get to the end, stop. That's like from Better Off Dead. If something gets in your way, turn. <laughs> okay, it's called Mesh Balloon. I've used Mesh Balloon, under, but under the masking section? Where, where is this that you speak of? This mesh balloon right here? That's the only balloon I see. Okay, so. So how, okay, why didn't that select? Mesh balloon. I don't know that I know how to use it. And then edit the stroke as a normal brush. I'm missing something. What am I missing? Is it uh, control shift or is it masking? What it? missing something. What am I missing? Base type mask. Does it, you know what? Um, I think, I think it has to not have subdivision levels. Is that true? This has subdivision, so it might not be working. Here, let's go pick this one and see if it works. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Just masking, it gives a prolonged stepped stroke. Oh, are you talking about it has lazy mouse on it? Like the, num the number and the red line that's hanging off the back? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because usually you can't put lazy mouse on the masking brush. So I think that's what you're talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, lazy mouse. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm like, 
I'm like, you can edit your strokes after you've laid it down? I don't understand. Okay. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay, got you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jimmy. I did not know that. So it's funny that Ma uh, Mesh Balloon gives you that feature. Interesting. No, 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 no. Thanks, man. It just took me a minute. It took me a minute to figure out what you're trying to tell me. Okay, I think I'm... I think I'm done with that for a minute. Maybe I'll go back and have lazy mouse gun lasso. Yeah. Lazy mouse got added to masking, but everybody complained about it. So it got turned off. Oh man. Don't turn it off. <laughs> Doesn't help when I forget the name of the feature. That's all right, man. It's all right. Masking lazy mouse drove me nuts. So you're the one. <laughs> no, I could see, I could totally see that, how it could drive you nuts. But it's nice to know that it's available if you want to use it, you know, and where to get it. So it's like, it's hidden in mesh balloon. Who knew, right? having masking lazy mouse on by default is what people hated yeah I, I i think i would hate that too and i love this song oh not right now but later, check out Starlight Brigade on YouTube. Not right now, later. <laughs> it's like a, it's like old school anime cartoon with amazing music. Like a... All right, let's move on to the the clothing. What time we got? One twenty-five. All right. Let's give her a, a turtleneck. Oh, get back here. I better save this. Save your work, people. And I feel like those buns need to be even bigger. <clears throat> Maybe not as thick this way, but bigger in circumference. Can I link my art station? Uh, sure. If Neil doesn't beat me to it. There you go. You beat me. Can you put it in YouTube, Neil? We'll let you.
Restream bottle, send it over. Okay, cool. Where'd my teeth go? She's missing her teeth. <laughs> Cricket. That's funny. And I agree. <laughs> I don't know where my teeth went. Huh. <laughs> Those aren't teeth. <laughs> Maybe they are. <laughs> They're cubes. I, sometimes I get random objects in here because I'm trying stuff out. Oh, funny. So I got to go through these and go, is it in here? Is it in here? Well, do I have two eyelids? Looks like I have two eyelid, two sets of eyelids. <laughs> yep, it's cube. Yep, I don't I don't know where the t I'm just going to make new ones. <laughs> Dad tired. Put a puck in your mouth. There we go, teeth. That's better. <laughs> no. The cube joke, maybe. Let's see. She's got a small neck. Hey Jimmy, what have you been working on these days? Can you say? Have to kill me? Any th thoughts on how the stock market rather than Netflix and Disney? I don't, you know, I, I have to be honest, I'm a little sad about the whole Netflix thing because the big corporations, they, it, it, it kind of felt like they started to get watered down. Like they didn't want to take any risks, right? They needed the, the tried and true, you know, successful movie. And that usually me means sequels. Um, but Netflix was, they were going out and taking risks, even if they were shorts like death, you know, death robots or whatever that one love death robots. And I, I love it. I love it. And, you know, when I started hearing there were shutting down some of the animation studios, it just killed me, killed me. Oh, so yeah, hopefully it's not the case in the studio that keeps making risky animations, you know? Delete 
this. <laughs> she looks funny with with her buns hidden. Oh, cricket. That was one of my favorites. Favorites, favorites, favorites. I mean, they did such a good job with it. You know, they did it, they did it justice. I know, I know. It's such a weird thing, too, because... You know, Infinity, Disney Infinity was doing great as far as the game market is concerned. But it wasn't doing as good as, say, ESPN, for example. So they killed it, you know? It's like when you get these giant corporations making giant money in other industries, they expect every branch of their industries to make the same amount of money. Yeah, I agree. It's it was great. I'm such a fan of the Dark Crystal that I have it on uh, PSP. <laughs> Do you know what a PSP? So PSP is a, a PlayStation handheld console. I don't know if they're making them anymore. Um, but the first iteration of it, they had these little tiny discs. They look like CDs inside of a case. And they released a few movies on them. And they had... <laughs> they, they had actually, my sister gave it to me. You got... Gr well, that's kind of the part of the charm, right? You got a PSP? Nice. Yeah, it's not, definitely not for everybody. Like my kids, they're not fans of it. Which is funny because, you know, the original um, Dark Crystal was quote unquote made for kids, but it's really, you know, it's like Monster Hunter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah same that and labyrinth yeah labyrinth I can't believe I actually met, met the kid uh, Toby from the labyrinth the little baby all grown up he was at uh, CTN one year um and he's an animator at Leica, I guess. <laughs> Ludo. Nice. <laughs> Secret of Nim. I love Secret of Nim. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Toby Froud, Brian Froud. Um, they have such a unique style, unique look, you know, in all their stuff. So charming. Okay, I think I'm going to just subdivide this for real. actually had a so I was in my in my gaming career I worked for incognito which was a Sony developer I worked on a game that never saw the light of day 
um, made by, it was being head by uh, David Jaffe. So if you know who um, Tailson Jaffe on Critical Role, it's his brother. And I was making a first person shooter game and I was animating the first person hands and the guns and all that stuff. That was pretty fun. So Incognito made Twisted Metal Black and uh, Warhawk. I worked on Warhawk. Let's see. And so I had some experience with developing for the PSP, which was kind of fascinating. But I had a hacked, I had a hacked PSP, so I had some uh, like garage, garage games that people had made, and I had somebody who had taken like Magic: The Gathering and turned it into a PSP game. Hey Neil, would you mind linking to the old, if the old one is available, last week's? Maybe that's what you're already on. David Jaffe is known for um, his work on God of War. I think he worked on the first one. You worked on Night Trap, the only game to be banned by the California Congress. <laughs> uh, I haven't worked on a game like that, um, but the studio that I worked at did before I got there. They worked on a game called like 25 to life or something the xbox game it was like that was during the time when developers were like seeing the seeing the dollar signs from grand theft auto and thinking that the reason grand theft auto is a success is because of the adult theme of it which is not the case obviously If you're making characters just for rendering, do you just poly paint them and render? Them? Yep, I do. Uh huh. Yes, no lo low poly to bake workflow, correct. Which is a nice thing. Just trying to break this silhouette here. That's a good thing to know, it's, it's particularly certain parts of it, you know? Okay. 
I don't want to do the whole body, just the the bust of her. So about to here. Um, have you tried real time render a character? I have not, but I want to. Have you done that yet? I've done real time with Eevee, but not with Unreal. And like Marmoset. Because those are essentially real-time engines, but yeah, not with Unreal yet. Oh, you couldn't make it work. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Marmoset's great. <laughs> she looks like she's wearing a coat that's way too big for her. Yeah, their new lighting system. I saw the um somebody had made a train station and it looks it looks as real as can be, you know. And then somebody went and made it in dreams on the PlayStation, <laughs> which I found interesting because it still looked great, but it didn't look like, you know, a real environment, but it looked amazing. If you're sculpting a character and only have a limited number of references, what do you do? You dig deep into your experience and fill in the gaps is what I typically do. But if you don't have the experience, then I generally find other reference that's similar, like either other uh, concept from the same artist or more like photographs, like if you're doing anatomy, you can get realist, realistic anatomy. Um, clothing, you can get clothing references. Ref references. Does it go Z work with Marmoset? I don't believe so. <laughs> Trying to make her not look like she's. Punching her shoulders up. <laughs> yeah, I totally should. Come on, move. I think I'm going to split these arms off.
Yeah, Cricket, I actually went... Um, I don't know if you were able to... Ping me when this is done, if you could. I'll show you the way. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it, man. Means a ton. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Point two. I can get this body looking okay. Got such round shoulders. Got to figure that out. Your arms are too big. Oh, you're taking off. All right, man. Thank you, brother. We'll see ya. I'll have to work, work these shoulders out after. I don't have enough geometry. Need more. That's more. Mm -hmm. All right, just about time here.
I like how this dress has the, these really loose wrists that the cloth flows over her hands. So her fingers are just kind of sticking out the, the end of them. <laughs> Trying to see if I, if I missed anything. If I missed any questions, please feel free to ask. Sorry, whatever music is playing is crazy. All right. All right, Signor. My name is Shane, but sounds good. Hey Ram, how's it going? <laughs> no worries. Happens all the time. I've been introduced as Sean. <laughs> Thanks. I like your name, Pets of Warcraft. <laughs> I have a... So I have the, the old, old, old collector's edition of World of Warcraft. And it came with like a... a Pet Diablo. <laughs> Mersab Mercablo. <laughs> Yeah, you don't see many people with that. It's kind of fun to have them run around with you. <laughs> it's like a bone.
Guild Wars. Nice. I actually did an asset for Guild Wars 1. A couple assets. Yeah, I did um, the kind of some some characters that kind of looked um, Arabic-ish, like desert, desert-ish. I can't remember the name of the. Let's see. How to any print a logo on the t-shirts? Um, hey, Zofo. Um, I would use a, I would use UVs or you can just sub, uh, subdivide high enough and then use Lightbox or not Lightbox, Spotlight to transfer an image down to the surface. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm. I can't get this to point. Mm. Those are too heavy. Kajabi or Thinkific? Uh, sort of. They have different pros and cons. Thanks, Charlie. All right, you guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I want to maybe turn rotator eye. Oh, Ram. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't used it yet. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Leonard. That'd be awesome. I still am not the size of these things. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know. She needs a smaller, longer neck.
think I made a line down the middle accidentally. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. I appreciate it. Oops, I do want to do that. She looks a little choked. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, yeah, got to Now that I got here, it's like now it's adjustment time to get her looking closer to the to the concept. I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. I don't want to make her look gaunt. At this stage, subtle, subtle movements make big changes. All right, there's perspective. <laughs> I need to paint her eyes and yeah, there's a, there's still a lot of work. I think her body's too small or her head's too big. So lots of changes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and watching, um, asking questions and all that. I really appreciate it. And as always, I give away my brushes for free. If you want to go check those out you can find them at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I teach an online workshop. It's also called the character work, the 3d character workshop. You can check that out the same place. So thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Monday. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, everybody. See ya.